So here we are in the midst of a pandemic trying to figure out how to engage our students in a virtual setting. And it's not easy. Are you struggling to figure out how to increase engagement with your students in a virtual setting? Today, I'm going to share with you five activities to increase student engagement in a virtual setting. Stay tuned. <laughs> of you have seen the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It comes on often from time to time, especially if you're watching 80s movies marathon. Anywho, there is this scene where there's a teacher in a classroom lecturing his students. Anyone raised or lowered? I think the topic was on economics or something. I'm not quite sure. Anyhow, he's standing in front of his class. He's he's given a presentation. He has notes on the, the chalkboard behind him and he's referencing them. However, the one thing that's interesting about this clip is that his entire presentation is, is quite dry. And so as he's speaking to his class in his very just monotone, dull voice. Adams here. The camera frequently shifts to him and then to his students. And as you look at his students, there are blank stares. They, they just lack emotion. They're, they're very apathetic. And you may ask yourself, like, are they even listening to what he's saying? Is anything registering? And it is quite hilarious, more so because of the actor whose name I believe is Ben Stein. He is literally not taking in this feedback from his students because typically you're supposed to analyze your audience and then based upon, you know, even nonverbal information, you, you're supposed to make adjustments, but he doesn't do that at all. He continues with this monotone presentation. And as he begins to ask questions to check for understanding, he's like, anyone, 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 anyone i'm honestly i'm not gonna do do you any justice you just have to watch this clip to get the the full humor of the story he's actually popular not only for this scene but i think uh, a visine gets the red out or clear clear eyes commercial as well same monotone voice and as dry and as dull as it is it is super hilarious and popular it removes redness and has an ingredient to moisturize wow Anywho, I bring this up for uh, many reasons. We've all sat in a classroom as, as children and even as adults where the spokesperson will, will present and they will be so dry and they won't modify their presentation to ensure that their audience is engaged. Now, I'm not saying that every day has to be a day where you come into the classroom and you break out your top hat and you get on a table and you start dancing and, and entertaining your class. If you do that, great. I'm sure that will increase engagement in your class, but not many of us have the, the time, energy or or talent to do that. But not to worry, I'm not to worry. I've actually tested out a few activities that I myself have found to increase student engagement in a virtual setting. So I'm going to share them with you at this time. Activity number one, games, games, games. Okay, I'm sure that's not really too much of a shocker or surprise, but yes, students love games. Uh, I mean, adults, we love games. I love playing games. And there are a couple of websites that um, you can go to to incorporate these activities into your classroom. Two in particular that come to mind are Kahoot and Jeopardy. They both can be found from a, a simple Google search, but these can be incorporated into your classroom as warm-up activities. Exit tickets, if you wanted to do a mini review, if you wanted to increase fluency, or if you simply just wanted to have a fun Friday. All around, these activities are such a wonderful addition to your classroom. Activity number two. Okay, this might be a stretch for some. Cooking demos. Cooking demos. With cooking demos, you can incorporate reading, reading of recipes, uh, math, when you're involving measuring or things of that nature. Chemistry, writing. You can have the kids, um, the students write a, a summary as you would do if you were you know, doing a lab experiment, or even if you're not doing an actual um, cooking demonstration, maybe you can simply do some sort of science experiment demonstration from home. 
Those are really engaging and students always want to see the final outcome. As a matter of fact, a lot of people in general seem to watch food videos online for various reasons, but I'm noticing on YouTube, they seem to get a lot of views. Activity number three, uh, who done it games, AKA CSI games or crime scene investigation. These activities are not only perfect to help students perhaps work as a team or practice problem solving, but they typically, I find, they are typically so engaged with trying to really crack the mystery and figure out who actually participated in the crime. And they're usually surprised at the outcome. So I find this activity to be truly engaging. If you want ready-made materials, you can always find some on the Teachers Pay Teachers website. Activity number four, icebreakers. Now icebreakers traditionally are done at the beginning of the school year. However, I find that you can really do these types of activities throughout the school year because there's always things that you can learn about your students and your students can learn about one another that cannot be covered just from a beginning of the year activity. Some things that come to mind are would you rather activities, four corner games, and again, these are activities that can be found from a simple Google search, or if you go to Teachers Pay Teachers, several teacher authors have created activities on that website. So those are great to incorporate into your classroom, virtual classroom. All right, and last but not least, activity number five, pixel art. Now, pixel art is quite new to me, and maybe I've only discovered it because I've been teaching virtually, but it's been a blessing in disguise. I found this to be helpful for a group of students who traditionally have an interest in art. And since, you know, we aren't in an art classroom, creating pixel art projects or completing pixel art projects have been a blessing, a complete blessing for these students who like to create images online. And for those of you who may not know what pixel art is, it's just a form of digital art created through the use of software. I've seen many teachers create pixel art using PowerPoint or even Google Slides. Again, if this is something that you do not know how to create, you can find ready-made activities on Teachers Pay Teachers. If you are interested in creating your own pixel art activities, you can Google tutorials that are on YouTube. One of the reasons I find this tool or this type of activity to be phenomenal for students is because yes, on the one end, they're able to create this digital image that they will admire. However, for teachers, teachers can actually tie in academic content. So you can actually have students practice on a skill where they are answering a certain number of questions. We'll just say 10, for example. And as they answer each question, a portion of their pixel art image, if they answer the question correctly, will start to unveil itself. So it's like you start to see missing pieces of the puzzle start to connect and come together so that hopefully in the end, if they answer all 10 questions correctly, you'll see the complete picture of whatever, you know, the, the um, image is that was selected. So there you have it, folks. Those are my five um, activities to help increase virtual learning for students. Um, if you have any activities, engaging activities that you'd like to share, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Also, I'd like to know how many of you have seen the Ben Stein scene in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And let me know if you found that scene to be hilarious or if not that scene, the um, clear eye scene commercial, I'm sorry. If you like this commentary and would love to uh, share it with others, please feel free to do so. I will see you all in the next scene. Have a great day.